Hello everyone and welcome back to Mentos Play Spelunky. This is um daily challenge for October 19th. Um, I had a first segment of this recorded, which you will be seeing um, uploaded at the same time as this one. But if you notice, the volume kind of cuts out eventually. My USB port is not the most active all the time, and so my volume cut out. And when I switched it to a different USB port, OBS no longer recognized the sound input from it. Um, or so it seemed. So now we're kind of stuck where Spelunky has no sound going on and we have this kind of split video for the sake of continuing commentary at least. Um, which is obviously not exactly what I would want to have happen, but it was better than the alternative of losing the run entirely. So this is what we're doing for right now. Um, I really do apologize there are no Spelunky sounds at all. I know I usually keep them pretty low, but I like to keep them on. But right now I really didn't have an option, it was either um, just kind of quit the run and come back later with a different run, which I don't know if I would have time to record tonight or continue on recording this one, but have it not have Splunky sounds and have to split it into two parts. I went with the latter, obviously. I'm not sure if everyone would agree that that was the best decision of the ways to handle it, but it was the decision that I felt would be most fitting. And so, here we are, running through today's daily challenge, the October 19th daily challenge, once again. Um, in the second part of these, of this double video of this daily challenge. And we are trying to slowly escort the key, the shotgun, and the damsel all down to the bottom floor at the same time. Which is not very fun. <clears throat> I will admit that I do kind of see the possibility of things going badly pretty easily. Not being able to have sound, especially when having killed the shopkeepers, is definitely a bad thing because you don't have the musical cue to tell you when they're dead. So, um, that's obviously not a good thing. Uh, but we're gonna do our best to make do with it and to survive. And hopefully it'll work out for us. I can't make any guarantees, but I can cross my fingers and see what happens. I wish I had known that altar was over here before I dropped the damsel off. I should have checked on that, but we need the health anyway. Um, let us... Hopefully that'll work. It does indeed. Oh god. This guy almost got at me. We have a lot of shotguns laying around, so we can easily grab one, but we want to sacrifice at least one more shopkeeper. Um, I would love to open up the vault and take that shopkeeper down as well to get an item halfway to the Kapala. But, with the ghost there and not all that many ropes nor anything like a shotgun, I don't think that would be a wise decision to make. I think that would just result in our imminent demise. So, instead we are doing things this way. Man, it is really, really off-putting to play this game without sound at all. I will not lie. <clears throat> like, sound tells you so much in Splunky, and without it, it is very, very difficult to continue playing. Um, obviously, I'm making it work as best I can, but that does not necessarily mean that it is working well. There are various audio clues, um, not the least of which being when bats take off, you can hear them taking off. Uh, when shopkeepers are all dead, you can hear that fact. Right now, we've got none of that. We do, however, have an altar that for the cost of a bomb, we can get at least an item from. And if we can sacrifice the shopkeeper as well, then we can get a uh, shotgun. I'm uh, Not a shotgun, a Kapala as well on this floor. So that's our goal right now. Get both of these things sacrificed and see if we can't make something good happen. Actually, given the amount of cavemen over here and the fact that we can probably take at least two of them alive and that we can probably take these two alive, I think we are in good shape for the Kapala. We are indeed. Excellent. So Kapala has been earned already. We are going to fire this way, which should hurt the shopkeeper. And we have no way of really knowing when he's dead. Which is the major, major disadvantage of not having sound. But he is in fact dead. We can get this blood from the snake and this mini rat. And move on to the jungle. 
Because in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. And there is an altar to Kali down here. Um, obviously we don't have much use for it just yet. We could sacrifice a damsel to put ourselves one step closer to the 8 health bonus. Which is not really a bad idea. Um, it might happen if we can get there easily. I think the shopkeeper is glitched. I will be very happy if that's the case. Seems that indeed he is. So we can just fire a few shots in here. Take all his stuff. Plant a bomb over here to get to the altar. Because we might as well at least take the shopkeeper body over. And there is also this crate up here. And we need to look for the black market. Which I need to pay extra hyper vigilant attention to. The blinking of the Ujedi because I cannot hear it. So let us take this shopkeeper to the altar. That won't give us anything obviously, but it is an extra sacrifice. We do have a vault here, we are not going to worry about that one. Because it would be rather unwise of us to put in the effort to get in that vault. Instead of just uh, going along with things. Oh dear lord, that was closer than I would have liked. Now we could potentially take the damsel to the altar um, for the cost of probably a rope. Or two ropes, I mean. Which is not a horrible idea. Um, it'll put us one point shy of... Oh yeah, one rope. I forgot we had the climbing gloves. Which should put us like one point shy of getting our 8 health. I should have whipped him a couple times for the bonus blood. But I didn't think that far ahead. Unfortunately. But I have not seen no sign of blinking on this floor. So I'm pretty sure our black market is not here. And we will move on to the next floor of the jungle. After naturally Norton comes up. And tries to screw me over. But forward we move. On to jungle part 2. I really wish that there was a setting in Spelunky where you could turn the audio back on when your input device changed. Um, but I don't believe there is actually anything. Um, settings. Nope, nothing that we can do. Oh well, so we will continue to... Oh god! Between the parachute and me coming out of the pause menu firing my shotgun. I just got kind of screwed there. I do not like what just happened one bit. We are going to check out this half of the map because obviously we need to look for Ujedi blinks. Caught all that blood from that bat. That was rather impressive aim actually. Although of course it wasn't intentional by any means, but uh, we are going to blow up this tiki trap in the interest of getting this damsel at least his blood. Don't need to worry so much about getting uh, the actual health from him, but I would like to get some blood. And then, if I toss him down here, he might survive. Nope. Sorry, doggy. It was a necessary sacrifice. Black Market is on this level. Do we see where? No, which means it's probably behind a wall somewhere around here. Or I guess it could be over this way. Oh, I see it now. I see where it is. Now we get in here, and we're good to go to the black market. Apologies, I just talked while the mic was quite far removed from my head. But on the bright side, at least it didn't, and at least it didn't make things too bad. Shopkeeper one has moved. Shopkeeper two will die if he's on this level. He was not. He is in a rather horrible place for us, honestly. I was kind of hoping you would fall down from that. Oops. <clears throat> Come on. Yeah. We do have a cape on this 
level, and a jetpack. Obviously, I will be taking the jetpack. I should also kill this shopkeeper over here in the spider web, just in case he gets free. And what do we have down on the bottom floor? Anything worth the risk? A lot of bombs. Definitely worth the risk. We're going to get the Ankh taken care of first. And then we're going to go get all those bombs. That should put us at almost a maximum amount of bombs. Which is very exciting for me. So we've got in the Ankh now. There is also a pitcher's mitt, but we already have that. Uh, we will just bomb through the shopkeeper right here. That worked out surprisingly well. Actually, extraordinarily well. And we have 83 bombs now. This shopkeeper is still kind of being a jerk about things. So we're just going to bomb our way down here. And make sure that we don't fall on the spikes, why don't we? Pick up this extra climbing glove just for good measure. And blow up this tiki trap just for safety. And in we go. And that should bring us to level 4 of the jungle. Indeed it does. Indeed it does. So this run is turning out pretty well, much like yesterday's. Um, we got the jetpack, we got a Kapala. We are easily lined up to get our 8 health from the altar. When we get... And hopefully after we get sacrificed, we'll have the opportunity to actually take advantage of that. And we've got a ton of bombs. we got not many ropes, but they are very important when you have a jetpack anyway. Things are going very well. Our shopkeeper is still alive. Which does scare me in a way. Just die already, shopkeeper. Can't win. You cannot hope to win this game we play. This game of life and death. Of ghouls and ghosts. Of treasure and doom. Regardless, that shopkeeper will hopefully not be an issue, regardless if he's still alive or not. It is just a matter of making sure that is the case before we come take this idol and move onwards. It does seem like the shopkeeper may have died. I'm not sure because I don't see him anywhere and I don't really want to take that risk. He is over here. Now he's dead. Good. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. Kill the monkeys, come up here to get our idol. I like it, we're also over 100,000, which is up there in my high scores for the daily. Not a great score on its own, right, by any means, but not a bad one either. <clears throat> we are on to the ice caves, where we sense a strong psychic presence, which kind of scares me. Um, of course, the psychic presence I learned in yesterday's episode only does 10 damage, it is not necessarily an insta-kill, but we only have 5 health, so for all intents and purposes, it is an instant kill. And that damsel has not actually died. I am impressed, Mr. Damsel. But I will instead take your blood and move onwards, because I don't want to deal with trying to escort several things on a level where there is a guy shooting little mystical pink balls at me. Oh god, I did not expect that shopkeeper there. We get some more ropes, we get even more bombs. We're up to 91 on the bomb front, which is, quite frankly, a ridiculous number of bombs to have. Um, we can easily ghost whatever level has the vault on it. So this is going well for us. Very, very well. I am excited to see where this run ends up. Um, having this many bombs means that unless I go absolutely crazy with the amount of bombs I use in the City of Gold or on the Temple, we should have more than enough to kill Olmec the easy way without any kind of worry. We are going to drop downwards. I guess I might as well blow up this pot. I should be saving jewels for if I do find a vault, but it's also easier to just collect them if I don't know there is a vault there. 
We can anger this shopkeeper who was just happily bouncing around on that little jump pad. And the vault is on this level. Okay. So first things first, we need to get rid of this dude. Which should be just one bomb making a hole away. And excellent. We're going to drop our shotgun off over here. Since I did not see our giant head statue, we do want to have the ability to do that free. We don't need to worry about the damsel so much, although he is going to get freed by our bombs. Oh man, that actually freed the shopkeeper in one bomb. I did not expect that, honestly. So now I need to kill the shopkeeper. Perfect. Um, both the chests are open, so now we just wait for the ghost. We are going to wait up here and get him to kill, uh, and get him to turn these two gems up here first. Like I said, I'm not worried about bringing damsel, six health, if we're going to die, it's going to be an insta-kill that we can't avoid before we sacrifice ourselves. If we had already sacrificed, obviously I would want the damsel. But seeing as we haven't yet, I think it is in our best interest to not worry quite so much about it. So come on, Mr. Ghost. Come and get me. I'm going to take a drink, just to taunt you. I'm a bit worried looking away <clears throat> because of the fact that I can't hear when the ghost gets here. But it should be happening any moment now. We're just going to chill here in the meantime. We could try to bomb out more gems. Um, might not be a bad idea, actually. Let's bomb out that one. Get the ghost up here. Get him to hit at least that ruby. And then get him to come down this way. Okay, that did not work out as planned. But we can still make this work. Oh god. Mm. And then you are going to come down this way. Oh god, no. Come down this way. And then, perfect. Thank you, Mr. Ghost, for giving me some diamonds. We are going to need to get out of here very fast. The climbing gloves almost screwed me. Room. Boom a doom. We are going to use a decent amount of bombs on this level just for the sake of getting as much gold as possible. We are going to have broken 200,000 by the time we leave this floor. Uh, but we could always try to get more. Oh god. Of course, the more I try to get more, the more likely I am to make a mistake that costs me my life. So I do have to be a bit careful. But we are up to 240,000 plus the 5k from that brings us to 250. Oh god, climbing gloves. 254, and we can move on to the next level where we should find our head statue that will allow us to move on with the hedget. Um, of course, we are going to be short on life after this level, but that is a natural occurrence in a hell run. It's unavoidable. At least I think it is unavoidable. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone getting to hell without sacrificing themselves using the Ankh. And that also means that if we die on this level, the only way we get screwed is if it is by being crushed, because then we lose our jetpack. If it is literally any other form of death, we are fine to go. Of course, we want to bring our damsel to the exit, because that will give us a health immediately upon respawn. Oh, wow. Shopkeeper, are you dead? You are dead, Mr. Shopkeeper. I'm glad to see it. I always love the level where I have to sacrifice myself because it means that I don't have to be so careful. I can kind of go about my business, and if I mess up, all it means is that I have done things right. Which is kind of cool. Um, there doesn't seem to be much else going on on this floor, though. Uh, we can kill this mammoth. We want to try to avoid getting enough 
blood for another Kapala charge because we are almost overflowing as it is and I would like to get the health first thing on the next floor not last thing on the floor where I kill myself so with that we jump to our doom bring our shotgun with us and move on to the fourth level of the ice caves where it will feel like the fourth of July and we will see what we can do. It feels like the 4th of July. It does, game. It does feel like the 4th of July. There is a lot of stuff here that we can stomp on. We're actually already up to 7 health. We just sacrificed ourselves last floor, mind you, and we have 7 health already. And we haven't even made it through all of this floor. We just made it through the very opening of it. That is a sign of a good start to a post-sacrifice. Oh god, that was really close, however. That is why I usually try to avoid using my whip on UFOs, quite frankly. There is a sapphire up here that I missed. I might as well go back for it, because I am in no rush. If the ghost comes, I can easily outrun him. And if not, then... Obviously, there was no reason to rush to begin with. Shopkeeper is actually already dead, and he left his shotgun here for us. That is very nice of you, Shopkeeper. I'm not entirely sure how you died specifically, but I'm sure it involved a UFO. Come on. Knock down my gold. Yeah. Oh yeah. Stomp that guy. Whip our damsel twice for blood. We are up to 8 health, soon to be 9. And then we can stomp on this yeti for just a little bit more blood. I know it's risky. I know. And I know that we didn't get an altar, which I would have hoped for in order to get our plus 8 health bonus, but you know what? I'm not going to complain about leaving the ice caves with 9 health, having sacrificed ourselves and gotten our uh, hedget. So, you know what? It works for me, guys. It works for me. There is a shop with a lot more bombs right at the start of the jungle, right at the start of the temple here. That was really close to being a very dangerous bomb. There is a medic, which could come in handy, but quite frankly, we have 99 bombs. Shopkeeper is dead from Anubis. Now we just need to get these purple rings to disappear, because we do have low enough health where they will kill us in one hit, regardless of the lessons learned yesterday. And then we're going to bomb this way to kind of draw Anubis upwards, and hope that we can just take him out with our shotgun nice and easily and then just avoid these purple rings. Now given the amount of bombs we have and the potential for something interesting to happen we can go down here and get this crate. We could actually just grab the Matic and use that for the other crate. Uh, we should put a bomb there, take out that Thwomp. Being proactive. And then we are going to come down here, mine our way two hits down slap that for some more ropes which are helpful not super helpful because we have the jetpack but helpful nonetheless now that may result in doggy dying in one more whip I didn't know if the matic counted as one damage or two I don't know why I whipped him another time quite frankly other than the fact that I didn't want to have to worry about him if I decided to just make it to the exit without worrying about the shopkeeper which is an option on the table although the main reason it is an option on the table is because I'm afraid of setting off Mr. Alligator Man and having him telefrag me. But, we have the scepter here, which we can easily use to kill said shopkeeper. And I think that's what we're going to do, quite frankly. We're going to wait till he gets close, and then boom. Shopkeeper is dead. We grab our Matic. Not this chest, the Matic. We're going to hit that once, that once, and then we just need to kind of aim our escape. 
Perfect. We have over 300,000 gold now. We are having another very successful daily challenge run. You will not hear me complain about that fact. I am actually quite ecstatic to have two good daily challenges in a row. We do have 10 health now, which isn't the best I could ask for, but it is certainly pretty good. Um, we want to... Oh, I missed that bomb up. This one will hit it though. Good. We don't want to set that guy off until we can stomp on his head. We also want to be wary of the mummy. Perfect. That's one way to take care of them. So now, of course, we are on the lookout for that there City of Gold door. We will let that guy hopefully fall downwards. Thank you. Get our gem here. Open the City of Gold. I should have used that to kill the shopkeeper. I could have killed this wall keeper and then not had to worry about him and gotten a free shotgun easily. But he'll get himself killed easily enough. I wish I could see a little bit further over, but I cannot. So all of our gems are right there in a nice little neat line. He's one shopkeeper is still alive. If we could get him in the lava, we could get a, we could get that shotgun easily. But he needs to jump over this direction. Which he does not appear to want to do. There we go. Shopkeepers are defeated. So is Mr. Hawkman. Now we do not want to exit through that door. We want to come up here. We want to ghost this vault. We could also toss a bomb right like this to get an extra ruby out of the deal. Oh, well there goes the idea for ghosting the vault, so onward we go to the City of Gold. I did not expect that explosion to blow those gems directly onto me, quite frankly. I did not see that coming. Toss a couple shots at the mummy to take him out the easy way, grab this scarab while it's nice and easy to grab. So now of course the City of Gold you need to be a little bit extra cautious on because things can go badly very quickly in the City of Gold. As we saw yesterday, ahem. But we are going to get some more health from our damsel here. Perfect. You know, for the fact that we never got the 8 blood, uh, 98 health sacrifice bonus, the fact that we're at 12 health, health right now is kind of astounding. Not to mention the 89 bombs we still have after using a plentiful amount of them. The fact that we can easily blow our way through Tiki Central here. We have a shotgun. We don't have to worry about getting one from this shopkeeper. We just already have it. We have the potential for more health as well, I should add. And 12 is not our maximum that we can have by the end of this level. In fact, it is the minimum we can have by the end of this Well, not the minimum by any means, but you know what I meant to say. Uh, shopkeeper is already dead, actually, which is really nice for us. That's going to save us some scariness. Let us plant a bomb here. Grab this stuff. We are also going to grab a dead body. Because there is an arrow trap by the Necronomicon that could pose a problem if we do not block it with something, like this man's corpse. Now we are going to stand right on the edge here, toss two bombs on Anubis 2 and GTFO so the same thing that happened yesterday doesn't happen again. Huzzah! Hooray! <clears throat> now we just be a little bit careful. Oops, that's not being careful. There goes Mr. Mummy. Just a little bit more gold for us, of course. 
Here goes Mr. Spider, which is a little bit more blood for us. And this guy can give us even more if we time our jump right. Excellent. 13 health is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, we do want to grab our shotgun, and the ghost is coming, so we do want to get out of here quickly. Which is a little bit dangerous, mind you. Especially considering this thwomp. Whew. Deep breath. 480,600. We are on Olmec. Unless I severely mess up this fight. And by that I mean try to fight him the hard way when I can just blow up my path to hell. We are in good shape to at least get to hell, if not beat hell on this run. And that would be the first time I've recorded an entire successful Hell Run. <clears throat> you know, it has its little glitches in this case, but... You know what, I'm not going to complain about the fact that we are at least getting to Hell on this episode. Uh, probably breaking 600,000, maybe 700 or 800,000. We're going to be up there in score, depending on how much we get here. And in hell, we could approach that million dollar mark. We won't. We aren't going to beat it, I don't think. We didn't uh, ghost vaults early enough to really have a good chance at that. Or we didn't. We also didn't uh, abuse the city of gold enough. But we are going to get a good score. Maybe not a you know record score, but a good score. And I am fine with good. So now we need to find out where Mr. Necronomonomonomicon is munching. Necronomonomonomicon is nom nom nomming. Seems to be right about here. But we can work that out specifically once Olmec is over on the other side, safely out of the ability to harm us. <clears throat> go, 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 Mr. Olmec. Go, go, go to the side. Thank you. Now we are going to be like, you are munching here, so like one bomb there, one bomb here. Should just about do things. That should work. I like it, I like it a lot. It's a nice easy way to get Olmec down to the bottom when you have this many bombs. And this path is going to be lined up perfectly as soon as we finish our bombing. Excellent. That was a really risky way to handle that, but it also saved us a bomb. That was a really foolish way to handle that because it cost us an extra bomb, but it also got us a ruby. So you know what? I'm fine with it. Now we just ride Mr. Olmec to our exit to hell. And we enter hell with 13 health. 66 bombs and 20 ropes, as well as a jetpack, a shotgun, and well, I think that pretty much explains the important part because everything else is pretty much every other item in the game. So, hell, here we come. My old nemesis, it has been a while since I have been to you, especially successfully. Did you really just survive jumping onto the spikes, Mr. Vampire? Because that seems ridiculous to me. We are going to get Vlad's amulet because I like to have it. Didn't quite work out as well as I planned, but it worked out pretty well. Um, we can bomb this tiki trap and unlock the amulet in one bomb, making it nice and safe to retrieve. Now the question is, do we take this path downwards or the normal path? We're going to try to go the normal path. Oh dear lord, what have I done to myself? There are a lot of balls and chains around here. Oh god. Oh god, this is hell. This is really hell. You know what? We're going to put a bomb right there and we are going to let this ball and chain explode and do some damage for us. It didn't really do damage where I hoped it would. So that's not going to hit me there. I 
Oh god. I should have just taken the power, the tower uh, path. Dear lord game. This is madness. That worked out about as well as I could have expected it to. So did that. This, not so much. Vampires, as you may know from past episodes where I have been in hell, are not exactly my best friends when it comes to small confined spaces, and that is going to set that ball and chain off. So we are just going to kind of duck out of the way for a moment. And then we are going to have to take a risk. That risk is this gunless shopkeeper, so not as much of a risk as I originally anticipated. And getting to the exit. So we lost four health there. Four health, not a big deal. Um, but it is approaching a big deal, if you know what I mean. We don't have to worry about fire because we have Vlad's amulet. That's the reason I like to get it. It's not just the fact that you don't have to worry about lava. It's the fact that you don't have to worry about fire in general. Don't know if that is the damsel or the succubus. Seems from the fact that it hasn't done anything yet that it is the damsel. We're just going to blow that guy up. You know what, we're just going to blow up this tiki trap as well. Because I think if I take Mr. Blue Demon... Well, one of these Mr. Blue Demons down there. Oh god. I forgot that they did that. Thank you. For working out so perfectly according to plan. Now, I think if I can... Grab Mr. Blue Demon and get over here. This is not quite plus 18 health. But this shopkeeper will be. He should get himself killed at some point, let's be honest here. At least that's what I'm crossing my fingers will happen. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We're going to need a good timed run to pick up his body, bring it here, and boom! 18 health. Pretty much anything that's not an insta-kill or an infinite combo is not a threat anymore. So, we now move onwards to the third level of Hell. If we can get to Yama, we're going to beat Yama. Let's put it that way. Um, it's just a matter of making it through this last level without dying. Which, I am not afraid to use bombs to make happen. We will get 24 more bombs on the Yama fight. And quite frankly, bombs are not really an issue right now. Should probably wait till that guy dies before I try to pull off this maneuver. And the shopkeeper should get himself killed pretty quickly after waking up by jumping on spikes. Thank you, Mr. Shopkeeper. And here we go. Except first we are going to actually do this because I want to be greedy and get some extra gold. Greed, 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 greed. That was not the succubus. Oh well. Onward to the king. King Yamayama. This is going to be exceptionally easy, by the way. Assuming I can make it up high enough to use the usual rope strategy, we will have no issues whatsoever here. We're going to kill these guys, get their free 24 bombs. Oh yeah, we don't have to worry about firemen. I mean, in most cases, you don't really worry about firemen, but Spelunky is one of those cases where the idea of a fireman is kind of threatening. We should really blow up this spike block, as well as this one, and jump on this vampire's head. That guy just killed, I mean, that guy just saved the vampire's life. Vampire owes that guy a great debt. Now we blow up that, we put a bomb here, and then we just go to town firing at this guy. Because why use more bombs when we can just kill him the easy way? Which I think he is already dead, actually. 
No, he is not. Oh god, what have I done? That was really, really stupid and really, really close. Why you go that way? That works. Okay, now he's dead. Now our exit is unlocked. We're going to go down here, do things the safe way by getting rid of these tiki traps before we do anything else. Perfect. Mine out all these rubies, and then we can take our victorious hell run on the daily challenge and be ecstatic. We are going to break... We're definitely going to be close to 800,000, if not over. Which is, I think, easily my best score ever. I think we are... De yeah, we're definitely going to make it over uh, 800,000, I think. Maybe just barely, but I think we're going to make it. Crossing my fingers. Oh, I think we did just barely make it. Come on. Yes! Over 800,000. Now, although it is rather silly and risky, of course, as I think everyone I've ever seen beat Yama does, gotta go over there. And what better way to leave hell than with 69 bombs? That is impressive. That is the perfect number of bombs to leave hell with, in fact. So all told, I think this turned out to be like a 50 minute video, including my little downtime for technical issues, but it turned out well. We just beat Hell on a daily challenge for the first time. We just had a total Hell run on camera for the first time. So this was a good run. This should put us pretty high on the leaderboards and keep us there through the remainder of the day. It might not keep us in the top, you know, 10, but it should keep us up toward the top 100 or so at least. Final score. Go, 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 go. Numbers get higher. And 704, I believe. Yeah, so 804, 250. I like it. I like that a whole lot. That number makes me happy. That number makes me happy. You will be remembered as a hero. Why, in fact, I will. So far, second rank. That goes to show something, that within the first hour of the daily challenge, I got beaten by someone who only beat Olmec by 14,000 gold. That's impressive. Well, first two hours, I apologize. But for right now, we started out very well. Daily for yesterday, we ended up where? 53rd, with 366,000. So today could end up being a pretty good scoring run. Uh, what's our average daily? That's fastest times. That's not what I want. Uh, daily all time. Average of top 10. 426, 327. That is going up higher and higher. I did not want Goro rules. I wanted my score details. That was, in fact, our highly daily challenge by a while. And now all of our daily challenge top 10 are over 200,000. Which makes me happy. In fact, uh, half of them are over 400,000, and three quarters of them, no, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 70% of them are over 300,000. It's getting good. Regardless, thank you guys for watching despite the lack of sound and the technical difficulties involved. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the two videos that have been kind of. Uh, meant to be together but kind of separated by pure luck um i hope you've enjoyed them and i hope you will continue to enjoy them and i'm happy i decided to record Splunky today first successful hell run in quite some time first successful hell run on the daily challenge ever it's been a good day so thank you guys for watching and i will see you next time take care everyone